hello everybody. Uh, I'm glad to see you uh, here in this room. Uh, today we're gonna spend next half an hour talking about Keda, and uh, you know we should probably get to each uh, other a little bit more. So uh, I would like to ask: Are there any Keda users that are using Keda in production? I can see a bunch of people. Cool. And uh, is there anybody who doesn't know what Keda is, or maybe just you know know the name, auto scaling, whatever, but you know don't know the details? Okay. Okay. Some. Also some newcomers, this is great. So uh, now it's my turn. So my name is Zbigniew Rubalik. I know the name is pretty hard to pronounce, so don't feel bad about it. Uh, I'm based in Czech Republic, uh, Europe. Uh, I've been around Kubernetes and open source for many years. I'm Microsoft MVP. Uh, and uh, why I'm here today, I'm a long time CADA maintainer. So basically I'm with the, with the project since the beginning. Uh, and finally, uh, just a few weeks ago, we started a company around Keda called Kedify, so I'm the CTO there, and, you know, and we try to support the project and help our customers. But today, I'm not going to talk about the company. I would like to talk about the project. So, uh, you know, today I'm wearing my maintainer's hat, so uh, I should probably take off this, this one, right? Uh, and uh, let's get started. So uh, first, I will, uh, you know, maybe wait, wait a little bit because there are more people coming. But basically, I will try to explain what Keda is, what we are trying to achieve, what is, what is the vision, what is the idea, maybe talk about like some advanced features, about some you know, interesting features that are in Keda. So. And uh, then I will cover some tips and best practices so you can use Keda like the best way, uh, best way it could be so it is you know, working well in your environment, uh, short demo, and uh, I will also quickly talk about, about the future of the project and what we are trying to trying to do in the future. So I can see that the people are coming. OK, this is great. So actually, uh, let me start with a short story. So we are in this room. And uh, imagine that there is a bar in this room. So probably somewhere around here, I'm the bartender. Uh, I like beer, you know, so I'm serving a good beer. Uh, and so I have a few, few taps at the bar, and I'm serving one tap. And uh, you know, giving you uh, good beer. So maybe you know this guy in the in the front row would like to have a beer. So he's coming to the uh, to the bar. I'm giving him the the beer. This is great. Maybe after some time, you all of you will learn that okay, this beer is really great. So I would like to have also uh, uh, one beer. And you will start coming to the to the bar, you know. And I'm fully, fully utilized, fully you know uh, occupied by serving the beer. So uh, in the end, I'm you know. Not, no, I'm not able to handle, handle the load, you know, handle the amount of people that are coming to the, uh, to the bar. So maybe I'll ask a bunch of people to help me, you know, with it. So I have more, more tabs uh, on the bar, so they c come and they basically help me auto-scale the solution, help me auto-scale the tabs, so they will serve the, uh, serve the beer, uh, you know, uh, from the extra tabs. So this is the first solution. Basically, I auto-scale the tabs based on the utilization, based on my utilization, ba maybe based on the beer flow, right? But if I'm a little bit smarter, what I can actually do, I can you know, observe the space, observe the room, and I can maybe see that, oh, OK, over there, there are people are coming. You know, they are forming a queue. So maybe they are coming to the bar. So I can be more proactive about uh, what's, what's going to happen, and I can be more proactive in the auto-scaling uh, of the tabs. So I can you know, ask those people to help me uh, a little bit in advance. So I suppose you got the, you got the, you got the picture. So if we. If we basically convert this, this, pro, this solution, this beer problem, into a technical problem, it is the very same. So we have some consumer application that is consuming some stuff. This application is basically the, are the tabs at the bar, and they are consuming some data from some external system. So it could be RabbitMQ, Kafka, or, or it could just you know, do some stuff and query uh, and do it based on Prometheus. So, so the first solution, the naive, naive solution, basically, is that we, that we basically Auto-scale based on the based on the utilization, based on the flow of the beer. So this is the HPA. This is the Kubernetes HPA. It just monitors the utilization and scales out the application. But if we are, you know, more smarter, what we can do? We can actually observe the queue of the people coming uh, coming to our bar, or you know, it can observe the queue in RabbitMQ, Kafka, whatever. So basically, we can uh, we can predict that some something is going to happen to our workload, and it can be uh, it, it is done by by some external events, by some custom metrics maybe. And uh, you know, th this kind of auto-scaling is, is useful for some certain scenarios. 
because sometimes you know the actual actual utilization, the CPU or memory consumption of the application doesn't reflect the actual need of our application. You know, because some, sometimes the application just consumes messages, not doing much stuff, but we need to you know consume the messages much faster. With traditional HPA approach, you cannot do that. You need some external metrics. So this is what Kera is doing. You know, and also we have like this our bar, you know, with the beer, and maybe in the future. Uh, we will start serving shots, maybe some cocktails, uh, drinks, and these are like all the additions, extra, extra features that Keda provides on top of HPA. So this is like the, the idea, idea behind, behind Keda, and um, it brings the elasticity to your, uh, to your platform. Because you know, you may ask, okay, so why do you need to auto-scale the test? Because you can put uh, like the people uh, at the bar like right, right away, right from the beginning, so they will be like serving the, the beer from 10, 10 taps uh, from the beginning. Yeah, this is, this is doable, but it is not, uh, I would say, efficient. Because, you know, if the, if the beer is not good, people will not come and uh, the people at the bar will be useless. So, uh, we really need to think about, about the platform, about our solution, and about how to bring the elasticity. Because it solves two, two big problems. So, the first problem is, is the ability to handle like a higher load. So, more people are coming, so we can auto-scale the, scale out the application. Or, uh, or, you know, we can save costs. Because if there is no need for the application to be running, we can scale it down to zero. So this is, this is very useful, especially these days when everybody's trying to save costs. So this could really help uh, saving our cloud cost because the application auto-scaling makes the pressure on cluster auto-scaling. So imagine that you, you have an application deployed, for example, on AWS, you have Kubernetes, and the application is running on a Kubernetes. If you enable auto-scaling, application auto-scaling, if the application is scaled down to zero, it makes the pressure on the, on the cluster auto-scale, and the cluster auto-scaler can also, also scale, uh, scale in the number of, of nodes. So you are saving resources and saving costs. Okay, so what is Keda? Keda is trying to make uh, event-driven auto-scaling as simple as possible. So as I just told you, you can, uh, you can scale any deployment uh, or, or job, or you can scale a, scale a job based on some external events or custom metrics. It doesn't rely just on CPU or memory. Or memory. We have 65 plus different uh, event sources, like these connectors to external services, so AWS services, Azure services, Prometheus, RebitMQ, Kafka, you name it. And if there is a, like any connector missing, you can, you, know, you can implement it and contribute. Or if this is some, some kind of like in-house solution that you have in your company and it's proprietary, what you can do, we have this concept called external scaler. It's an interface that you need to implement. It's a very simple interface. And this way you can feed the metric to Keda and Keda will handle the rest of the uh, stuff for you. So it will auto scale the stuff based on your custom, custom scaler. The, actually, the greatest news uh, of, of today is that uh, Keda has been recently uh, graduated. So basically, uh, it is a good news. I would like to thank our community, CNCF. It's a really great achievement. And uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So I was uh, with the project since the beginning. So originally the project started, uh, it was 2019 or something like that. And it started as an internal cooperation between Microsoft and Red Hat actually as a, you know, POC project. Uh, you know, then we saw that the project is, is quite useful. So we open sourced it and then later donated to CNCF and we went through all the stages through sandbox uh, incubation till graduated, which is, which is happening today. So it is a really great achievement. Um, our community is, uh, is quite, uh, I would say, quite huge. Uh, we have some, uh, some users listed on the, on the web page. Uh, we have uh, contributors from many companies. Uh, and I would like to highlight this, this QR code for Keda users. We are collecting a survey about like, how are you using Keda and what we can do to improve it. So this is the QR code with a very short, short form. So please, uh, please take, a, take a one minute to, to fill out the form. I will also share the, share the QR code at the end of the presentation. So uh, let's, tie, let's talk a little bit about the architecture. So how are we actually doing this kind of stuff? So this kind of event-driven auto-scaling. So Keda is built on top of Kubernetes. So we are not trying to you know, uh, reinvent the wheel. We are trying to use the existing stuff that's in Kubernetes. So Keda is built on top of HPA. So we, still are, we are still using HPA for the auto-scaling under the hood. And we are using custom metrics uh, API interface that's provided by, by Kubernetes. And we feed the metrics to, to HPA. There are two main components uh, in Keda. So the first component is a Keda operator or controller. It is doing the majority of work. So basically, if you deploy some resource, it monitors the resource. Uh, it connects to the external services and provides the metrics. And the second main component is the metrics adapter or metri metric server. This is the connection point to Kubernetes API. And it's basically a proxy. And when, 
HPA or HPA controller is trying to do the decision whether it should scale the, uh, scale the application, it asks through this, uh, through this matrix server, matrix adapter, uh, like the correct, the, the metrics that we are providing from Keda. We also have some admission controllers and additional stuff, but this is not so important. I would like to highlight one more thing. So basically, uh, at the moment, HPA cannot scale to zero. Uh, so, uh, and this is the, the way, so we need to handle it ourselves from, from the Keda point of view. So we have, uh, we have doing it through the operator. So we have actually two phases, so, so we call Activation is the phase when we are scaling from zero to one or one to zero, and then there is the scaling from one to n. And the one to n scaling is handled by HPA, the activation phase is handled by, by the operator. So Keda, Keda has uh, you know, few, few resources. The main, main object is called scaled object. This is, the, this is the place where you define your scaling metadata. So basically we are saying, okay, I would like to scale this deployment based on this uh, kind of data. Uh, you can, you can auto-scale deployment, stateful set, or any custom resource that provides scale sub-resource. So basically, uh, anything, anything that's running on Kubernetes can be auto-scaled. Uh, so basically, in the, in the, in the scale object, you can see uh, in the middle, there is a scale, scale target ref. This is the reference for our deployment. Then we are setting some uh, the, the replica bounds, so minimum, maximum replicas. And then uh, at the bottom, there is a trigger section. And there we are basically saying which, which metrics should be used to to auto-scale the, the workload. We have also additional advanced, advanced uh, settings, but this is like the very basic stuff. We can specify multiple triggers in one scaled object. And actually, I would like to highlight uh, th this point. So if you would like to scale your application, even with HPA, uh, and you would like to scale it based on multiple different metrics, always use just one resource. Because if you use, for example, two HPAs, or maybe scale this object and uh, HPA, uh, this, you know, this kind of uh, things will uh, con result in conflict because you know each each uh, thing is independent, so it will try to fight each other. So if you need to specify multiple metrics, please use like this uh, the single scaled object where you put all the all the triggers. This is very really important. And also through the scaled object, we also provide all the all the all the capabilities that HPA does. So you can specify all the all the related uh, all the HPA related settings. It is uh, it, you know, it's very easy. The second uh, second. Uh, I would say uh, main resource, it's called scale job. And this one is useful for processing of long running executions. So imagine that you have a workload uh, that is doing some, you know, maybe pulling some data and then it's doing some calculation. It could be maybe hours or days. For this specific use case, uh, you know, Kubernetes deployment scaled through HPA might not be the right, right choice because in the middle of the, you know, execution, the HPA might decide that it would like to, you know, kill this particular pod and, you know, scale in again back to you know, minimum replicas. So for this kind of, kind of um, use case, uh, you can use Kubernetes jobs. So basically, we are building the scale job on top of Kubernetes jobs. So again, we are reusing the concepts. And it's, it's, it's very similar. So basically, instead of the reference to the, to the deployment, you, you put the whole, uh, let's say, job, uh, uh, Kubernetes job uh, reference, like the whole, whole stuff in there, and then specify the replicas and the, the, the same, same trigger section. So in this case, you know, we can monitor RabbitMQ and, you know, consume, consume messages from this, uh, from this queue. And, the, you know, we will spin individual uh, Kubernetes jobs uh, that will, you know, process and do, do, some, do, some, uh, do some useful stuff. So these are the two main, two main, um, two main uh, resources. We also have a resource for handling of secrets because, you know, usually when you, when you would like to connect to your, you know, to your external service, to this Kafka or RabbitMQ, you would like to steal as or some kind of you know, authorization authentication. For this specific use case, we have a, a resource called trigger authentication. Uh, it's like a single place where you can store, store all, all this, all this uh, you know, information and then just reference it uh, from the scale job and it will pull all the, all the stuff. It supports secrets, it supports uh, Azure Core Vault, uh, uh, I manage identities on AWS, Azure, so all the stuff. So I really, really recommend using, using this kind of stuff to, uh, to, to uh, you know, to uh, let's say store store the credentials or secrets, uh, and not in the, the, like in the in the main resources. So this was like the brief introduction to the architecture. Uh, I would like to maybe uh, just quickly go back and uh, spend uh, more time on this. So uh, recently we did, did a let's say uh, architectural change because as I mentioned, there are two main components: the co operator and metric server. The metric server is providing the, the metrics to HPA, and operator is doing the rest. And uh, originally, uh, like the metric server was uh, doing more, more stuff for us. So it was opening the connections to the external services 
uh, and you know uh, more things. But recently, we have decided to move the majority of the logic to uh, to the operator, so to have the single source of truth. So uh, this resulted in, in less connections to the external services because originally we have open connection. To, for example, if we are scaling application based on Prometheus metrics, then uh, if you deploy your deployment, then you deploy your scale object with this with this reference. From Keda, we open connection from the operator to query the metrics, right? And then another connection from the metrics server. And this is not needed, so basically we decided to move majority of the logic to the, to the controller, to the operator. So we are now op opening just one connection uh, to the external service, which is good. And uh, it also helps us, uh, you know, uh, with some, with some, uh, with implementing of, of some features that I will, I will try to uh, explain later on. So this was like a huge, uh, huge, uh, you know, internal change that wasn't like present uh, uh, or visible for, for users, but it helped us a lot with the project. So, so, uh, so the first thing is certificate. So uh, we have uh, certificates management for any internal communication. So between all the components, uh, the, the communications is, communication is encrypted. Uh, we have support for set manager. We have uh, support for uh, you know, plugging your own CAs into Keda. So for example, if you need to you know, connect to some some service that uh, is using your own certificates, you, you can use this. So uh, this is, at the moment, is quite uh, quite nice uh, addition. Also, Prometheus metrics. Scaling is nice, you know, if you, if you scale the application, this is nice, but if you scale at scale, it might be harder, you know, to manage the, the solution. So uh, we are trying, constantly trying to add, uh, you know, Prometheus metrics about what Keda is doing. So we have like a number of uh, resources, you know, number of errors, number of failures for individual individual scalers. Uh, we have like, you know, metrics there, you know, the activity of, uh, of, the, of the stuff that's happening. So we have like this Prometheus metrics. And uh, recently we have added uh, support for open, also for open telemetry. So we are ex exposing the very same metrics also through open telemetry. So you can, you can connect to your open telemetry connector and we will uh, we will uh, send the metrics uh, that way. So it really helps, you know, managing, managing the, the deployment on, on our cluster. Okay. Another quite new feature is uh, pa pausing of auto-scaling. It was like a feature that imagine that you are auto-scaling based on some metrics in, the, in Prometheus. This Prometheus uh, instance is going into some maintenance or something like that. Uh, and uh, you would like to pause the auto-scaling. And for some reason, you don't want to, you know, remove the scaled object. It would, it would do the same job, right? To stop scaling, you just want to annotate the, uh, the scale object. So, so we introduced this, the, uh, uh, this annotation where you can specify that, okay, let's uh, stop auto scaling and uh, stay on this, you know, on the uh, current number of replicas, or, or you can specify the number of replicas that you would like to, you know, uh, set your uh, deployment on. With pausing the auto scaling, we are also, uh, you know, closing the connections to the external services, so you don't see any errors, any any problems in the external service service is not in you know, operation. At the moment, we are working on uh, adding this same, uh, same capability for, for scale job as well. And now, uh, I would say the, uh, the main thing that uh, I would like to highlight today is, uh, is this kind of thing. It's called scaling modifiers. And um, uh, this, is, this, is, this is a useful feature that we were able to implement after we did the big architectural change. So uh, what is the problem? So imagine that you have application and you are scaling the application base, on, for example, on two or three different metrics. What HPA is doing under, under the hood, it is taking individual metrics and then uh, choosing, the, uh, so to do the final uh, decision on, on the amount of replicas that needs to be, that need to be uh, scaled, uh, it is choosing the maximum value, so the greatest value from all of the metrics. There is no way how you can you know, modify this kind of behavior, it's baked into, into HPA. And for some reason, maybe you would like to have an average from all the metrics, or you would like to have a minimum. But, but we were, okay, let's, let's do this. Let's try to, uh, you know, let's say, fool the HPA and collect the metrics on our own, you know, do the calculation and then send the final metric to HPA. But uh, we have decided to support, like, let's say, more complex uh, evaluation. So uh, you can specify a formula and uh, it accepts like mathematical and uh, conditional statements. So you can say, for example, uh, trigger one minus uh, trigger B uh, divided by two multiplied by five and you know, all this kind of uh, crazy stuff you can do. And uh, so basically this, this formula is applied during each request for, for, you know, for the metrics and we compare it with the target and then send this individual value uh, to HPA. This way we can really like a, uh, basically fool the HPA and do do the job for us, uh, you know, to specify the specific 
uh, conditions for, for auto scaling if we have multiple metrics. But this is also not useful not if you have multiple uh, triggers, but this is also useful if you have, for example, just one trigger. This is a quote that uh, we got from one user, and he, he was mentioning that they have requirements to be always over provisioned by three ports, you know, and each of their ports can process three messages at a time. It, I suppose uh, it was probably RabbitMQ or something like that. And, uh, you know, before, before this, uh, this feature, it wasn't, we were, you know, we weren't able to do that because for each, you know, uh, each iteration or each scaling uh, operation, you need to add, you know, these uh, three extra ports. Uh, with this formula thing, it's quite easy, so we can just uh, specify, okay, let's use the value from the trigger, trigger one, and uh, plus, plus nine. Why nine? Because, you know, they need extra three ports, and uh, each port can process three messages, so it's, uh, it's quite simple. So uh, I think that uh, uh, th this kind of uh, stuff is very useful, and uh, we're still, like, trying to figure out what, what else can be achieved with this, but uh, this, is, this is really, really cool stuff I, I wanted to highlight. Okay, so uh, these were the f features I, I wanted to highlight, and uh, now some maybe best practices and tips. So the first one, uh, use fallback. Fallback is also like a feature that we have, it's an um, older one, and uh, it's, it's quite simple. So you have an application, you are auto scaling the application, but what would happen if, if the service that you are getting the metrics from, the Prometheus or Kafka, is down? You know, what would happen then? So uh, we have uh, implemented this, uh, fallback feature when you can specify, okay, if there are, for example, four errors, connection errors in a row to this external service, let's scale to 10 replicas. So uh, this is really useful. There is no, really no like a downside. So please, uh, please use this one, you know, just to be sure that you have the uh, right amount of replicas running if, there's, if there are some problems in the, in the external service. Other, other, let's say, uh, maybe not tip, but explanation on, on the actual behavior that uh, we are having. So um, we have this concept which is called polling or setting that's called polling interval. So basically with this setting, you specify how often, how often the operator checks, checks the metrics and, you know, and updates the, uh, the stuff. But polling interval is only relevant to, to the activation, to the zero to one scaling. Because if you recall, when I was explaining the, the architecture, the zero to one scaling has been handled by operator, so we can, you know, uh, set the specific interval, but the one to n scaling is handled by HPA. And uh, HPA doesn't have a, you know, let's say setting for specifying the, the interval for querying the, uh, the metric values. Uh, it's, it's cluster wide setting, uh, usually on, on Kubernetes clusters it's 15 seconds, and uh, you cannot change it as a user, you need to have like, the, you know, admin rights, and uh, so every 15 seconds HPA asks as for four metrics. So it is not that Keda is pushing metrics to HPA, but actually H HPA is asking the four metrics. So we have no way how to reduce the, the polling interval. But thanks to the uh, architectural change, uh, because the operator right now is the uh, you know, single source of truth, uh, if, you, if you enable a metrics caching feature, it's like in the advanced section, uh, what Keda is actually doing, it is, uh, just, uh, it is just querying for the metrics during the polling interval. So, for example, the polling interval is 15 seconds, so each 15 seconds it asks for, for metrics. And if HPA is asking in between, it is not doing, uh, Keda is not doing any additional request to the external service, but it is using the last, last value from the cache. So basically, it is caching the stuff. Why is this useful? Imagine that you have, uh, you know, hundreds of scaled objects in the cluster, and uh, all of them are asking maybe, uh, or querying the same Prometheus instance. You know, and uh, if you have like the polling interval set very low, then the HPA is asking every 50 seconds. It could be like a, a substantial load to this to this Prometheus instance. So uh, this way uh, we can uh, we can let's say um, let's say uh, do do some things around it. So for example, if you are okay with getting the metrics maybe just one uh, every 60, 60 seconds or something like that, you can enable this feature, and operator will just ask the, uh, the Prometheus for the metrics every 60, 60 seconds. So uh, any request in between will be just uh, hitting the cache, cache in the operator. So if you are you know, deploying Keda, Keda on scale, uh, this is a thing that you should consider and really like, uh, be careful about setting the, uh, the, the right, right values for, for polling interval and, and metrics caching. Other thing, other thing I would like to highlight, this is not a Keda feature, this, this is like the feature of HPA, but we are you know, enabling this, this capabilities through scale object as well. It's a stabilization window and scaling policies. 
So stabilization window is, is useful when you want to prevent a replica count flapping. Imagine that, for example, again, we are querying the metrics from Prometheus, and once the Prometheus tell us, okay, let's scale to 10 replicas, the next, next query will be scale to one replica, and 10, one, 10, one, so you know. So the, you will see this constant flapping in the, in the cluster. So uh, I prefer, you know, you should, you should try to think about, uh, about like the solution and about how to, how to handle this. So stabilization, stabilization window is the, is the right thing. So you can get specify the window uh, during each, like the HPA is, uh, is considering the, the replicas. Scaling policies uh, are just settings that, uh, with these settings we can control the rate uh, of change of replicas. So for scaling out and scaling in, we can say how fast or how slow uh, these operations uh, should happen. Useful stuff, and if you really like a, want to have like a good solution, uh, it's useful always to think about about these settings to to uh, you know to nail them correctly. Okay, and this is uh, another um, uh, like let's say Kubernetes topic. The first question that you can see on the slides: Why the HPA reports metric, metrics like this? This is a very common question that we got from users because you know. Users have uh, deployed applications, they deployed scaled objects, uh, KEDA, and everything is working correctly, you know, scaling is happening as, uh, as usual. But then the user will start, you know, be, you know, let's say, okay, let's, let's check the stuff. So they are querying HPA to get the specific metrics that it's getting. And HPA is reporting this really strange number. And the reason is, is very simple. This is the way how, how, uh, how Kubernetes represents float values. So basically, the, the first part, it's 4.8 and then uh, it's divided by five. So it gives you like the, this result of the operation will give you like the, the float value. So it's really just the representation. You don't have to be afraid about what is happening uh, with, my, uh, with, my, with my system, what, what are these uh, strange metrics. And then uh, other thing I would like to highlight uh, is, uh, or are metric types. So um, when you are creating HPA or scaled object, you can, you can define like what type of, of metric uh, is this. And uh, the, the setting, uh, it basically um, tells HPA which algorithm to use to, to uh, compute the number of replicas from the, from the metric. So the average is you know, using the average, uh, so basically it's comparing the, the metric value with average uh, across all the pods. The value is doing a little bit different. So again, please read the recommendation on, the, on this and think about like what, is the, uh, what is the proper way or the best way for, it, for your solution. Okay, so talk is cheap. Uh, we have. We don't have much time, so I will just do a very quick demo, actually, maybe, maybe a little bit shorter than I want. So uh, I hope it's visible. So I have like zero pods running in my, uh, in my, uh, in my cluster. And what I'm going to show you today is just this very basic stuff. So I have an application, and I would like to, it is consuming messages from Kafka topic, and I would like to auto-scale it uh, with Keda. So, so the stuff I d described, very basic stuff. So, so first, I will deploy the application, so the Kafka consumer application. It is standard deployment, and nothing fancy. It just connects to, the, uh, to, the, to Kafka. So let me, let me create this deployment. Uh, and uh, as, we, as we can see, there is one pod running with, with our application. Uh, and now I will, uh, I will probably generate some load. So I'm using this job to generate load, and it will, it will create 15, 15 messages. So uh, let me create this, this, let me create the load. So I will create 15 messages. And uh, if we check, uh, check logs, yeah, if we check logs, um, uh, okay, consume. Okay. Uh, we can see in this, oh, it's not so visible, sorry for that. But basically it, it um, this is the, this index, and it uh, received 15 messages. So, so uh, the application is able to able to uh, to get the messages from the from the Kafka topic. And now, uh, what I'm going to do, I will apply a scaled object. So, let me actually start with applying the scaled object. I will create a scaled object, and you can see uh, right now the pod is is been terminated because there are no no uh, messages in the topic. So, uh, Kira decided to uh, to you know to kill the kill the pod. I can just quickly show you the. Uh, the scale object it is the very simple one. So I have the minimum maximum replicas. I have the polling interval set in here, just telling the to you know to scale this consumer application based on this based on this Kafka topic. Perfect. So let me let me generate some you know bigger load. It will be more messages coming there. So we should see the auto scaling. Uh, so uh, this time we are creating I don't know how much, 500 messages. So hopefully in a, in a few seconds we should see. 
uh, we should see more, more pods coming running. Okay, so the first pod is, is been started by, by Keda, uh, and you know, we will find out that we are not able to handle, handle load, and more and more uh, messages will be, will be coming, coming to our application, and we will, we will see, see more pods. But actually, we don't have much time, so let me just quickly uh, s jump to the, to the next part. So I just want to show you the, the fallback. So basically, we will, I will kill the Kafka, so I will uh, delete the Kafka, Kafka cluster. And uh, how can I do that? Uh, actually, let me, let me show you. Yeah, this. So basically, the only thing I have added is the, is the fallback. So uh, actually, let me, let me create this, uh, this scaled object with the fallback. So it is just the update. So right now, we have the fallback. The application has been already scaled down to zero because the, all the messages have been consumed. Uh, and right now, I will, I will delete the Kafka, Kafka cluster. So I'm using streams, so I will just uh, quickly uh, delete my Kafka instance. The Kafka has been deleted. And in a few seconds, or maybe, you know, we will see that uh, the application has been uh, scaled to two replicas. This is the fallback. So, okay, I hope it will, it will happen. Yeah, okay, so, so right now we can see that the application, because we have no connection, we have no connection to, uh, to the Kafka topic, so, so Keda uh, scaled the application to, uh, to one replicas, uh, so to two replicas. The, the last thing I want to show you is, the, uh, is the, just the example of the, of the multiple, multiple triggers, but we don't have much time, so I will just show you the, uh, the, the scaled object. So basically here I have two triggers, the only thing I need to add to the trigger is the name, so I need to name the trigger, and then I can use it uh, for the formula. So here I'm saying, okay, let's use the uh, the, uh, the sum sum value for 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 both both triggers. Very simple stuff. And for the for the pausing, uh, I have like just just this annotation. So I've, if I create this this scale object at the moment, it will be uh, it will be okay. It will be, it will be scaled to uh, scaled to six replicas. And uh, the connection will be uh, to the Kafka will be dropped. Okay, let me let me go back to the presentation just to really quickly uh, discuss the future. So we are working on a cloud events integration. So basically, the metrics that you see, like from Prometheus and Open Telemetry, we also want to expose the cloud events so you can subscribe and receive this kind of stuff. We would like to work on multi-tenant installation because this is a huge topic for us. Because at the moment, due to the limitations of the Kubernetes API, we can create only one Keda instance in a cluster. So we are working with the with the upstream to to provide some kind of proxy for to to enable to install multiple multiple these things. Also, uh, another you know AI is all the place. So we would like to have a some open interface for predictive auto scaling because we have all these metrics coming from different sources about our application so maybe based on the based on the history we can predict the actual scaling so we can say that okay maybe uh, you know start scaling a little bit a uh, little bit uh, sooner based on some based on some history we will also would like to work on uh, global configuration uh, plugin management for external scalers and uh, last thing i want to say it's uh, carbon ever auto scaling so uh, basically, to reduce the number of replicas or the auto scaling st stuff based on the car carbon consumption, uh, there is a talk about this on Thursday. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, there are two Keda talks uh, on Thursday, and they are both in, at the same same time. But uh, I definitely recommend to to check this one and the other one as well. Okay, thank you very much. This is the the black back QR code. This is feedback for the session, and the blue one is for the user survey. And we have maybe just a few seconds for couple of questions. So does anybody has any question? Okay. Uh, a quick, will you be supporting job sets uh, with your scaled jobs? Job sets? Yeah, yeah it, it's good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yes, hi. For the uh, advanced trigger, there's an expression hidden in a string in a YAML document. Is there any plans to validate that expression through a dry run, or is it just apply and hope that the user? Yeah, there is, there is a validation. Like when you are applying the, the scale object, it's, there is, it's validated. Okay. By the way, I have some t-shirts over here and stickers, so if you want, come here after the, after the uh, presentation, okay? Hi, and uh, do you have uh, like a support for like a time-based, like a, I know the nine o'clock is going to spike. Can I like set a time and then do something with it? Uh, we, we have a cron scaler, so basically you can you can specify a cron. So you can have a cron schedule where you can say, okay, during this this period of time, scale out to you know, for example, five amount replicas. Okay. Thank you. 
Question about the HTTP scaler. Uh, is it possible, like, while we're waiting for the application to scale up, to show a message saying we're warming up the application or something like that, just to kind of give it a better UX? Uh, we are thinking about it. There is a plugin for HTTP scaling, but it is still, like, I would say beta, alpha, so it is still not, I would say, production ready. Because, you know, HTTP based auto scaling is much, much harder to achieve because you need to hold the incoming requests in right. case you are scaled down to zero. So we'd have to come up with some creative solution to show a message if you want to use that, that plugin like, as it exists today. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. there is, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we, are probably, we, can, we can continue offline. The talk is probably done, right? Thank you.